As you probably know, my name's Martin Polyakov. I'm the person that your projector is named after, or at least one of Mr. Roundtree's projectors is named after. And Mr. Roundtree sent me a really nice periodic table. I've seen this on the internet, but I've never actually seen it in the flesh. So I'm going to hang it up over here in the door of my office so I can be thinking of you when I'm sitting in my office. So I've cleared the space over here and there we are. So unfortunately I can't be with you because I have to be here in Nottingham while Brady, my <coughs> video journalist collaborator, is visiting you in Pitchford. But I really want to wish you great success and I gather that you're going to have some um, <coughs> lesson with Mr. Roundtree about boiling and melting. And I've always been fascinated by melting of metals. And it's really quite difficult for an ordinary chemist to melt a metal except melting something like gallium, which you can melt in the warmth of your own hand, if you're brave enough. And you could put liquid cesium in your hand, it would melt, but it would react and cause an explosion which you wouldn't really like very much afterwards. But um, occasionally things go wrong in our lab and so two or three years ago some of my students were using a lump of aluminium as a block round a piece of apparatus to heat it up. And they had heaters in it and a thermocouple to measure the temperature and control the temperature. But something went wrong and the thermocouple fell out. So the heaters were heating more and more and more and the whole block of aluminium melted and it ran down the apparatus and looked really rather beautiful. And in the Chernobyl um, nuclear reactor which blew up in Russia just over 20 years ago, the reactor itself, the nuclear reactor got so hot that the uranium and other elements in the centre of the reactor melted and the metal poured down at the bottom and formed a huge lump which was known as the elephant's foot and a lot of people had to crawl in to try and make this elephant's foot safe and cover it up with concrete so that the radioactivity couldn't come out. Why was it called the elephant's foot? Because it's shaped like the foot of an element, elephant, you know, rather fat and then sort of bulging out at the bottom. And um, you see I said elephant, element instead of elephant. One of my school teachers when I first started chemistry said elephant instead of element when he was talking to the class and <coughs> everybody started shouting and screaming with laughter and he never really managed to keep control of the class after that at all. So I wish you a really good lesson now with Mr. Roundtree and I hope at the end of the lesson that you'll ask some questions to um, Brady and I will try then to answer them through YouTube over the next few months. So, good chemistry. Melt on. <laughs>